This is Sparta! Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are in PvP. The first beta weekend with, or open beta weekend. Now, there aren't a lot of players in this, but there are a few. Any of them that you see without the colon in front of their name, like uh, the Furutakas, the Omaha, the that's it. All of the cruisers on the enemy team are all uh, real players. And so uh, we've got a couple on our team, they've got a couple, and we are going to get out here and have some fun. Um, now, we are in the Tier 4 American cruiser, the Omaha. Now, the Omaha is a fantastic cruiser. I am really loving this. It's a heck of an upgrade over the Phoenix. Um, I didn't mind the Phoenix, but the Phoenix is a floating citadel. And I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, so I've learned quite a bit. Now you can see I'm starting to fire early. Um, we actually clipped the mountain there. Uh, I've learned quite a bit in the short amount of time that it's taken me to play. But I played a lot of games. Uh, Friday night and Saturday leading up to the stream with Clone Guy on World of Tanks. So uh, I've learned a lot. And some of the things I want to uh, talk to you guys about as far as what I've learned is armor piercing and high explosive and when to use them. So if you're fighting anything that's a destroyer, high explosive. So super thin armor, high explosive. Otherwise you're going to over penetrate with your armor piercing and you're not going to do as much damage. So super thin armor, high explosive. Super thick armor. High explosive. Okay, so battleships, high explosive. Because you're just not going to pin them with a cruiser. It's just too small of a caliber. You're not getting through. Uh, I have yet to citadel a battleship shooting through the side of it with a cruiser. So setting it on fire and, f and using everything you can to try to uh, do as much damage as you can. Now, m try to set more than one fire. So we've got a fire there in the back, so you'll see me start to adjust towards the right a little bit. I'm trying to get the shots to land on a different part of the ship so that we can get two fires going, potentially. Uh, you can, I think, unless you've got the commander perk, you can have up to four fires going on in your ship, so it can really start to damage your ship very quickly. Um, now, see we've got the high explosive going for the Farragut. And we, we've damaged it significantly. Now we've swapped to armor piercing. Now watch the shots on the side of the cruiser of the armor piercing. Come on. Nope, we didn't quite get it. Unfortunate. Uh, we have armor piercing loaded here, so we'll just go ahead and unload it. Um, now it looks like we've got quite a few guys out here. Uh, another cruiser. Or no, that's a battleship. Sorry, that's a New York tier 4 uh, battleship. And here's another tier 4 battleship, the Congo. Um, so yeah, you can see a lot of armor out there. We're going to go ahead and try to throw some torpedoes at him. Uh, hopefully he doesn't see that coming and we can start to, uh, do some damage. Now the, the two battleships on the enemy team are both, uh, or actually all three battleships on the enemy team are AI. So, uh, doesn't matter whether he's seen it or not, the AI will, they will pretty much avoid torpedoes most of the time. Now, I'm going to make some mistakes later in this match uh, where I run into the edge of the map. But, I'm hoping that I get a showcase uh, the difference between the armor piercing and the, the high explosive. So, we've already seen what high explosive is capable of, setting those battleships on fire. And I'll be honest, as a battleship captain, it is so annoying to be set on fire. But it's not as bad as torpedoes. So, given the choice of being set on fire or torpedoed, I'll take the fire any day of the week because fire damage you can um, still fight with and you can recover most of it with your uh, damage recovery on your battleships. Uh, now I'll, I'll probably show you guys a battleship replay here uh, soon as well um, to give you guys an idea of what to expect on that side if you've never played it before. Now you can see quite a few rounds coming in from our left side here. Uh, these guys are almost in, in firing distance but not quite. Uh, so we're just going to keep focusing these guys down with high explosive. Launching a whole bunch of torpedoes in their general direction. And hoping that they decide to stop, like, avoiding them at some point. 
Now, right here is where I run into the side of the map for the first time, and this could have been devastating. Um, it slows you down. It takes a long time to turn, but as you can see, I hurry up. I throw a whole bunch of uh, torpedoes out there. He looks like he's going to be sailing right into it. So, uh, that's not too bad. But the problem is, torpedoes have a limited range. And the range on these torpedoes just happens to be five and a half kilometers. So, you got to keep that in, in mind too. You can't just launch a whole bunch of torpedoes and hope they run into them. Uh, if you're too far away, they're not going to hit them. Now, this guy has just turned. He's going slow. He's on fire. And he's very close. Which means this next salvo of torpedoes is almost a guaranteed hit. So, while those are on their way and they look to be flying true, we're going to go ahead and uh, switch to armor piercing and show you what they're capable of doing to this Omaha. Now, this is an actual person against us here. Now, watch. He's firing high explosive at us and... Wait for it. Side on to us. Can we get the Citadel? Nope, didn't get a Citadel there. Come on. What we're doing is trying to get the armor piercing straight through the side of it under his guns. And there's the Citadels. Three Citadel penetrations on that one. And we unload the next salvo and down he goes with two more Citadels. So that's the difference in getting shot with high explosive and armor piercing. Is if you've got the armor piercing penetration to do it, you can absolutely wreck people. Now, I didn't notice that there were torpedoes headed towards me, even though there was a torpedo warning. So I'm going to take one right in the booty. Uh, not preferable, but we live. He does damage our steering, which is not preferable, which is going to send us careening to the outside again shortly. But our damage control is about to come off of cooldown, and we are going to try to keep bringing this back. Uh, so we've already used it. That fixes our steering. It also uh, fixes the flooding issue. We've only got 2,300 hit points left, so we've got to be careful. Now, just as I get ready to uh, launch these... Okay, so we get those ones off. Now, again, look at the distance. He's at 6 kilometers. Those are not going to reach him. We need him to close the distance. So we're launching him straight at him. We know we have a, a range of 5.5. But, if he, move, or if he moves to avoid the one set, maybe he'll hit the other set. And he's coming towards us, so that hopefully will help. Now, again, just spamming high explosive right into the front of him. Actually trying to hit the superstructure. You don't want to hit the, the hull as much as you do the superstructure of the ship. So you can try to set it on fire, set the deck on fire. As you can see, he turns to avoid our other torpedoes. Runs right into the, the first set. So, uh... It's definitely nice to have a good spread if you can do it, if you're not 100% sure. And here we run into the side of the map again, which is not preferable. So uh, we're going to go ahead and throw some more torpedoes at him. Get a nice spread that are that probably going to go towards the exact same spot. Hopefully he runs into them. Uh, but we're going to keep harassing him with high explosive. Just trying to... There we've got him on fire again, and he's already used his damage cooldown, so he's going to... Uh, or damage control, so he's going to be burning for a while. So, now we're getting shot at from the left side, which is not good because we don't have the health to take this. So we're just kind of watching, making sure it looks like those torpedoes are going to fly true. Nope, he actually uh, avoids them. And just as we turn to uh, launch the, the other side of the torpedoes, our original side came back. And we actually crash into the edge of the map again, which is not going to go well for me, unfortunately. So we try to uh, throw some high explosive in the general direction of the Furutaka. Again, that is an actual person. And uh, we are hitting him. We're just trying to get the shots off. Unfortunately, the New York gets close enough to take us down with his secondary batteries. Or maybe that was his primary gun. Not 100% sure. But we take the New York down from the grave getting that nice little achievement there uh, or the metal whatever you want to call it that it's just a flesh wound just a flesh wound I'm just dead it's no big deal I can still kill you now that brings it down to just a 1v1 between two computers and uh, unfortunately our computer 
doesn't have a whole lot of health left. So, uh, it's unfortunate. But, we're not going to be able to pull this off because he's just going to run out of health before he can get it. And wait for it. Come on, you can do it. Nope. Did. But, we did pretty well. We did the best we could. Uh, some good PvP action. Lots of torpedoing. Pretty solid game. 127,000 damage with 114 hits with the gun. 5 torpedo hits. 3 kills. And 5 uh, citadel hits. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.